So I really like watching these kinds of videos. It really gives me inspiration. And so I decided to make one for myself. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a PhD favorites video. This is because it's coming up to the summer. People are gonna be starting their PhDs soon or thinking about applying for their PhDs. I'm just coming to the end of my PhD. I'm, I said that wrong, I don't know why I said that. I'm coming to the end of my first year of my PhD and I just really wanted to make a giant list and all of the tools that I wish I knew starting and coming in to help you guys prepare or kick off the next year with more tools in your tool belt for conducting your PhD. So let's get started. So category one of the PhD favorites, going with the category of academia. So the first thing is Mendeley. Now Mendeley, if you haven't already heard of it, is a referencing tool. If you're new to the whole research world as I was, when you're writing papers and things, you have to reference everything. You have to reference where your sources come from. But that sounds fine if you're referencing like one or two things, but often when you start your projects, you're gonna be referencing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sources. So how on earth do you keep track of all of these things? Mendeley. I know there are lots of different referencing tools out there. This is just my personal favorite. I really like Mendeley. I find it very, very easy to use. It's very intuitive and it always has a little web plugin, which I love, which means you can install it on Google Chrome and any website that you are browsing, you can click the little button and it will generate a reference for you. It also has a Microsoft Word plugin. So when you come to write up that paper, you can use the Microsoft Word plugin to like generate your references for you. It does all types of referencing style and I just find it really, really easy. They also let you read papers, highlight and annotate papers within their little app themselves. So I genuinely couldn't do one second without Mendeley and it's something that I definitely wish I knew about earlier and was able to sort of start implementing early in my PhD journey. The next one is something a little bit different and it is an app called Structured. Now I don't know if this is available on Android but it definitely is available on iPhone so sorry Android user. Structured is basically a like almost like a time management app I guess but it's basically a giant to-do list so if you're like me and you have like a billion and one things that you want to get done in a day but are really bad at ordering your thoughts and just need somewhere to dump it all down then Structured is the app for you. It allows you to just have a massive brain dump down the side of everything that you know you want to get done in that day or whatever and then you can drag and drop that into your calendar of your day. It also syncs with your Google Calendar, so that's a really nice feature. It just helps me really visualize like exactly what I need to get done in the day, and then I can kind of go from there. So it's really, really, really helpful. The second is Good Notes. <laughs> it lets you take good notes. And I say this in pretty much every video where I talk about how I study and everything. Good Notes is amazing. I talk about it a lot when I talk about my how I use my iPad video, which I will link down below. So I'm not gonna go into it in huge detail here. Good Notes, basically it's a note taking app. You can have loads of different notebooks. You can also upload PDFs and read PDFs and highlight and everything. It's just a great, great note-taking app. And there's loads of different ways you can use it, which I also talk about in a later video. So yeah, watch that if you're interested in good notes. Yeah. The next one is another fun one. And anyone out there who is doing any type of coding remotely, this is Code Academy. Code Academy is a great website where you can learn pretty much any coding language, like R, Python, whatever you're using. I found this really helpful because I have to do quite a lot of statistics and data analysis in my PhD. I didn't really know how to code before my PhD at all and Code Academy really, really helped me get to grips with some of the basic tools in R and Python so I could start analyzing my data with E. It's something I wish I knew about before I started because coding is really, really hard. And yeah, I just, I don't know, I just find it really helpful, so. There you go. The next one, this kind of comes off our publishing papers, reading papers thing, and that is PubMed. PubMed is a giant website database of lots of different published papers. Very, very helpful. Which we all know how to use PubMed, but what I really want to draw everyone's attention to is the advanced search button. PubMed advanced search. This really helps narrow down your search strategy. I'm going to do a future video on how to use PubMed advanced search later, but this is just to highlight that that feature does exist and we should all use it and become familiar with it. But I didn't really know how to use advanced so it's properly before I started. And I really feel like it would have helped me narrow down my paper choices and just made literature searching that whole entire process a lot easier and faster if I already knew how to use it. So yeah. The other thing I wanna talk about briefly, and I've talked about this in a couple of other videos before, but let's just give it its own little segment here. It's a technique called time blocking. Time blocking is basically where you don't do a task until it's done, you do it for a set amount of time. And especially when you're like just starting out on your project as I am currently, I found it really useful to keep on top of things. So say I want to learn 
learn to code. I want to learn to code Python. And say I'm also working on a literature review. I want to do that. Those two things are going to take years. If I just like spent an entire day coding, I would, it just, it just wouldn't happen. So I use time blocking. So I'll be like, okay, I'm going to do two and a half hours of time blocking. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do one and a half hours of reading. Then I'm going to do an hour of writing. And just having that time block rather than being like, okay, until like just going until I've read every single paper on X topic or until I've finished writing my introduction. Like it's just nice to have that time blocked out and it enables me to focus more and get into more deep work flow. Okay, so that was my academia category. Now let's move on to category two, which is desk organization. I definitely want to dedicate some time to talking about this. I just feel like when you start your PhD, like obviously you have some office space, or like a little desk place that you get. Not a lot of people customize their desk. Like this is gonna be your home for the next three to six years. So I'm a big fan of customizing my desk. So this is why I wanted to share some of the things that I've used to customize my desk set up and I just think it's really cute. So number one is my desk mat. This is like a giant desk mat that come, they come in so many different colors. I'll put the link to the one that I purchased below. I literally love it. I got a nice little pink one and I know it kind of seems pointless, but it A, helps me keep it, my desk like tidy and clean and protect it. But also B, it really like frames your workspace and it just makes everything feel so much more intentional and um, put together in your little workspace. So I think that's really, really nice and it's very fun. Number two is my mechanical keyboard. I've seen so many YouTube videos of people having like these really cute like mechanical keyboard setups and I was like, I want that for my desk. So I bought a mechanical keyboard and the fun thing about mechanical keyboards is that you can remove the keycaps. So I haven't done this yet because I'm gonna order some keycaps, but it also means that you can fully customize your keyboard and it also makes that really, really, really nice sound of like this. It's just very, I don't know, very pleasing and satisfying to me when I'm typing. So that definitely makes me happy. The next thing is a, kind of a duo thing. It's monitor and laptop stand. So I didn't really realize the importance of using a monitor um, until very, very recently. And now I wish I'd started off using a monitor because it's just so much easier to do stuff and visualize your data. And when you're coming to graph like big sets of data and things like having a monitor big enough so that you can actually see what you're doing rather than just like on your little laptop like this, it's just very useful. So I'd highly recommend buying a monitor. I bought quite a large monitor. I think mine's about 32 inches, which is very large, but I love this because I can have all of my different windows open and it's just very nice. So the second thing is a laptop stand. So I plug my laptop into my monitor, um, but also if you're not using a monitor and you're just using a laptop, like when you're hunched over at your desk like this and you're like, blah, 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 it's just, it's bad for your back and we need to, you know, we need to have good posture. So I um, found a laptop stand is good. It just like raises it up a bit and then you're not constantly hunched over. So that's a good thing to have. So now I want to talk about media, my media favorites. This includes playlists, podcasts, and social media platforms. Okay, there are three here. Playlists for studying. I never used to be able to listen to music while studying. Like I just couldn't do it. All this classical music stuff, it just was never gonna work for me because I just get into it, I guess. <laughs> well, I just like end up listening to it. Anything with singing, acoustic, I just can't do it. So if that is you and you're looking for something to listen to while studying in your new noise cancelling headphones, I would highly recommend the study lo-fi playlist. There's like Lo-Fi Girl or whatever on Spotify, great playlist. I just literally listen to it and all of their playlists like while I'm studying and I just, it really helps me get into that deep work thing. So I would highly recommend that if you're looking for a different study playlist. The second thing that I want to talk about is podcasts. Uh, my favorite, personal favorite podcast I'm loving at the moment is Detail Therapy by Amy Landino. It's a great podcast. It's very motivational. It's about like women in business. And as a budding entrepreneur myself, I find it very motivational to listen to. So there you go. That's my new favorite podcast. And number three, platforms. I almost just said it. Number three, platforms. LinkedIn. I've said this so many times, but yeah, you know it. Go get LinkedIn. Go it right now. I make an account, please. And that brings us to the end of this nice PhD favourites video. I know it's something a little bit different, but I like love watching these clips of videos and I kind of wish that I saw one on YouTube before I was starting my PhD because it just helps you like narrow down some of the things that you might need or like get to grips with some stuff that you want to learn before you actually start. So I hope that some of these suggestions have been helpful. If you have any more suggestions and things that you can't live without as a PhD student, please drop them below because I'm constantly looking to like re-improve and stuff. So yes, I would love to hear your suggestions as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then don't forget to click that subscribe button because we have more PhD content every week and it's very fun so come and join our fun PhD community um, and yeah drop a comment below and give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I will see you guys next week for another PhD filled video bye